Are churches asleep about the soon return of Jesus? Are they ignoring what is happening in this world right before their own eyes? Are they choosing to worry more about being like the world rather than preparing for what's coming? We know that you think they are because you told us so in a recent poll on our channel. 4,000 people responded and only a quarter, or in other words, 25% thought their church was awake regarding the return of Jesus. In fact, one third told us they don't even attend church at all because of this issue, this sleepiness issue. Those are amazingly sad statistics. So are all you folks out there right? <laughs> you bet you are, because Jesus prophesied this would happen. In the parable of the ten virgins, Jesus told us that right before his return, the entire church will be asleep. He stated it this way, Then the kingdom of heaven shall be likened unto ten virgins who took their lamps and went out to meet their bridegroom. Jesus tells us they were the entire kingdom of heaven and they were waiting for their bridegroom. That is the church. Jesus continued, Now five of them were wise and five were foolish. That's Matthew 25, 1 through 2. So not only are they those attending our churches, Jesus tells us that half of them are wise in his opinion, but half, a full half, 50% are foolish. Jesus then drops the bomb in verse 5. But while the bridegroom was delayed, they all slumbered and slept. Jesus tells us everyone who thinks they're a Christian is asleep right now. Everyone is asleep. Denomination presidents, pastors, seminary professors, even you and me. Jesus said we're all snoozing. That's a pretty upsetting statistic. Even more disturbing are Jesus' words that the foolish virgins, who make up 50% of those currently attending our churches, will have the door of heaven slammed shut on them. In other words, they're going to hell and they don't realize it. Look at your congregation on Saturday or Sunday. Half of them are likely not saved. Obviously, this is the issue of our lifetime. It isn't the U.S. elections or even what's happening in Israel. It's what is happening in the souls and minds of churchgoers all over the world. We know you have a big heart for this issue because I see your posts on social media striving to convince others to wake up. But they haven't worked, have they? Social media isn't the answer for the wake-up call. These are the primary reasons that Pastor Jake McCandless, Marquis Lachlan, and I formed the nonprofit ministry Last Days Overcomers to help reach the lost, the foolish virgins, and to wake up the wise believers, doing both before it's too late. We have launched our new website, lastdaysovercomer.org to keep you informed about our efforts. And there's a link to it down in the description. While you're there browsing around, download our free ebook that we made available on the site. 10 Signs the Last Days Have Already Begun, written by yours truly and Pastor Jake. We want everybody to have it for free. And to talk about this problem of the church being asleep and what you and I can do about it, we have Pastor Jake McCandless as a guest, lead pastor of Epic Church, to speak about this from a pastor's perspective. So Jake, welcome to our uh, video. We're so glad you're here because you know, most of us aren't pastors, so we just don't have that perspective. And I think you talking about your perspective as a pastor and your perspective from helping pastors in churches all over the United States, because I know that's something that you do, is going to be very helpful. How big a problem do pastors think that this sleepiness of Christians is? How big a problem is that? Well, I think pastors think it's a huge problem, but I don't think they would say it sleepiness. I think they should say it's sleepiness, but I think the problem lies in the symptoms. So I had a good friend who was a pastor, three kids, and his kids were sick like it seemed like every week. They're going to the doctor. Symptoms are being treated. They're trying to figure out what's going on. This went on for years. Well, eventually he moved. And as he moved, they found out that house was covered in mold. And so they were sick because of the mold that kept, you know, that was there. And that they kept getting sick. But the doctors kept treating the symptoms. 
and you know not finding the, the root of it. And I think that's really where we are with this. I think majority of pastors are seeing the symptoms, are dealing with the symptoms, are frustrated with the symptoms. My, my friend, I remember just, he's like, I'm at my wit's end. My kids just stay sick. And I feel like that's where we are as pastors, but we don't see the sleepiness. And I think that's a missing link there. And I think that's why what we're doing with Last Day Overcomers is so important. And this frustration has been revealed in many different ways. One of those is Lifeway did a research study, a survey with pastors last year, and they asked, the, what's the number one problem that you face in regards to dynamics with people in your congregation? And they gave a list of options. And the majority, 75% of pastors clicked that it was a lack of commitment or apathy was the number one people dynamic they struggled with. Now, when I saw that, I wasn't surprised because back in 2018, through my ministry, Stand Firm, we did a, we did a survey very similar to that. And we took all of the answers that came in. Of course, they're worded a bit differently, but 98% of them could put, be put in that category of their number one struggle was the apathy of the congregation, lack of commitment. But I think in all reality, what we're seeing is the fulfillment, the manifestation of what was prophesied in Matthew 25 with the, the 10 virgins. It is that sleepiness. And I really think as pastors, if we can kind of get over the hump and, and see it as this is scripture unfolding, not so much just the symptom. And I think that's why what we're what you're doing with your channel and what we're doing here with Last Day Overcomers is so important because we're pointing out it's it's not just the symptoms. It's a this this was prophesized. Uh, this is where we're at, and uh, we need to move forward knowing that. So uh, a follow up question to that is: All right, pastors know that they have this problem. Like you know, on your survey, it was like ninety eight percent. Uh, yeah. In the Lifeway survey, it was 75%. By the way, we did a survey on our channel of, of our followers, and we had 4,000 people respond. 75% said their church or all churches were asleep. So it's yeah. a big issue, and it's across the board. People in the pews think this is happening. Pastors think this is happening. But here's a question. What's keeping pastors from reaching out for help on this issue? Well, again, I think we—it's really a blinding. I think it's a veiling um, of where we are, you know, prophetically. And what we need to realize is we've got the snapshot of the end of the age, of the last days, and it tells us not just you know the events that are going to happen, but it tells us the condition of, you know, professed believers, conditions of churches, this sleepiness. And I, I think if we can begin to bring Bible prophecy into the the stream of all teaching and just have a balanced approach, I really think that would help us as pastors, as all believers, just begin to understand the time. And if you look at, um, and, and I know that you follow a lot of prophecy, Facebook sites and websites as well, where people interact with each other. And I see this enormous, enormous frustration rising up in people that other people are asleep. And that leads to a lot of what the arguments that we see online, because people are just so frustrated yeah. and they just haven't been able to break through to those other people that you're trying to communicate with. And because they they didn't have the right tools. So Facebook is not the right forum to do that. They they interact there and it just doesn't seem to work. But now I think we have a means that we can help them a means where we can have live events where people can actually achieve that breakthrough. So it's an opportunity for our followers, your followers and people in the churches throughout the USA to take their sleepy church going friends to an event and actually in the time that it has to break through, you know, where they can look at the events that are going on in the world, compare yeah. those to the things that were said in the Bible, and then the part that everybody's missing, look at what Jesus said we need to do about those things when they happen, not when the events are going to happen, but to do when the events happen, whenever that may be. So yeah, I, uh, you want to fill us in on how people can participate in these live events? Yeah. And, and what you're saying about awareness, I think is so important as we talked about, you know, what what's what's keeping us from getting to this? You know, how are we not seeing this? 
I know many of you watching this, you feel inside as me and Nelson are talking or you've watched any of his videos. You, it just wells up in you because I'm the same way. It's like, oh, some, something's about to break. Something's about to happen. People I love aren't ready. What what do we do? And you know, how do we, we deal with that? And that's me. It's just this burning desire. And I, I don't think that's just, you know, awareness, you know, scripturally of what's going on. I, I, I think it's the Holy Spirit working inside of us. And so I like to think of it, you know, you hop on an airplane and they give you that spiel about all the safety features. You know, one of those they'll talk about if the cabin loses pressure, these masks will drop down and they'll say, firmly put it on your face and then help your neighbor. And I think, you know, if you're viewing this, if you're tuned into Nelson's channel, then you're aware of where we are and your heart is you want to help people you love. And that's the whole point of the last days overcomers, everything that we're doing with these conferences, especially. I mean, this is what you're doing. You've got your mask on, but you get to go and help somebody get their mask on. But then really focusing on what shall we do? How shall we live? And if, I think if we had done these conferences and had this before COVID, I think there would have been a few more who held on to their faith and were ready. And so I feel like that's the opportunity that we have. But, you know, we're just a small part of this. It's going to take everybody who is aware, everybody who has their face mask on helping others. And so we want to do our part, but we want to encourage you to be a part of it as well. Uh, you can you can hop on, number one, pray, hop on, you know, helping us get venues and avenues and places to do this. Share it. We got our free uh, free book that's available. You can share that with your friends. Just make that them aware. That we wrote together, by the way, just to yeah, let absolutely. know. Yeah, and, absolutely. And then have the opportunity, you know, to, to really be a part of it because we can't do this. We can't get this ball rolling uh, until we raise a certain amount of money. And, uh, and that's, I, I think, you know, it's, I think we all could chip in a bit and uh, make a big mm -hmm. difference. And, and cause what we envision is once we get the funding to do a few of these events, the ball is then going to be rolling and it begins to support itself. And we get to work with people all over the world and help them put their mask on. People have asked me on this channel for years, how can we help you? Um, you know, how can we give to your channel so that you can keep doing what you're doing? You may not realize this as a follower, but people are emailing me about this. I don't want to say every day, but almost every day. And I've always told you, not yet. This isn't the time we're doing all right on our own. Well, guess what? Now is the time. This is the effort. There's a link to a website, our brand new website, lastdaysovercomer.org. And it's down in the description. You can log on to that website. And while you're there, download that free ebook that we talked about and consider paying it forward. Not paying us back for things we've done, but paying it forward to help people who are asleep in the church right now to wake them up. We know this is your frustration that you want to do that. And there's even a link where you can volunteer. Maybe you can volunteer at events to be an usher. Maybe you know something about accounting. Uh, we have all sorts of needs, video needs, accounting needs, you know, things that you could help us with to be part of building God's kingdom because there was never a more important time or effort to get behind in our opinions than this effort. Because frankly, other end time ministries aren't helping instruct people on what to do then when i say till then this is nelson and i'll see you there i'll really see you there because you'll be with us at these events